Joining you from the traditional territory of the Lekwungen speaking people of the Squamalt and Songhees First Nations on whose territory um, I live, I work, I play, I was born and raised and have chosen to raise my daughter. And the topic of mental health uh, is something that our family has lived experience with. And so being able to carve out some time and really for walk. as adults um, for walk. is so important. And so just thought I would just take a couple minutes to share my reflections over the last two days. Um, and really the, the collective care of adults. There were a few big themes that stuck out for me around collective care of adults and how do we enter conversations and spaces with curiosity and think about the attachment seeking versus attention seeking. That one, that one um, reminded me of Kimberly Shown at Reichel's work and how stress contagion in a classroom can, can happen and how it can transfer from an adult to a young person, which is also linked directly to school connectedness. We know that school can, and research tells us that school connectedness is a number one protective, family, fa, uh, protective factor outside of family and caregiver relationship. We heard that from doctors Lapointe and Mate. They spoke both spoke about those emotional needs of children and how teachers you play such an incredible vital role in that, and how to secure attachment, how to make sure the the children and youth that you get the opportunity uh, uh, to engage with every single day are seen, heard, and validated from you. And Dr. Clinton stressed that wellness is a core piece of education and wellness must start early. And that's why through the leadership of Maureen Dockendorf, who was our superintendent of early years, has brought Compassionate Systems leadership into the early years network. And the importance of play that Dr. Mate spoke about um, is something that often many of us have had the opportunity to talk with Monique Grace Smith about and that connection to land and being outside. And I must hold space for Phyllis Webstad. The gifts that Phyllis gave us today through her voice, through her lived experience, through her generosity, and the word ease and the opposite of dis-ease and the dis-ease that is felt when she wasn't treated as a person and the ease that she gets when she is seen and treated as a person and her why of her grandchildren and the journey her family is on for the first time in four generations. Kukshem to Phyllis for being a light maker. I will hold that term with me. And the youth for holding up your voices and bringing courageously your lived experiences and your advice. And I, I jumped in on this on the substance use session as well with the youth. And so telling us what they need to help them. Maria, a huge, huge thank you and gratitude to you for continuing to guide us on our mental health in schools journey and the entire team behind you, the technical team, the mental health in schools team and the ministry here. As we continue to gather to think about what our journey for mental health in schools is, as we explore and develop a system that is truly built with compassionate leaders, like each one of you today, how we can support teachers in the classroom better and what you need, and how we build our capacity as a system as a whole. And so what I'm taking away is the power of relationships and how to start with listening and holding space and I'd like to leave you with a challenge as teachers, if you could be light makers in every child, every child that you have the opportunity to interact with in the classroom, not just your classrooms, but in the hallways, in the gyms, on the playgrounds, in the grocery stores, be a light maker for those young children that you're entrusted with. Thank you for spending some time with us over the last couple of days.